Hi, this is Mrs. Alexander, and this is your Unit 2.2.2, .2 Food Labels, Preview, or Front Load. You've probably looked at the nutritional information on a bottle of soda or a bag of chips, and you know that this label provides helpful information about what's in the product, the composition of the food, and whatnot. Well, what is that label for? It's to help people, especially diabetics, to make smart choices about what they put into their bodies. In the previous activity, 2.21, you learned about the four basic components in food called macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. In this activity, you're going to get to define the various terms commonly used on the back of food labels and look at the different foods Anna ate, pick a label, and define and explain to me why it was important that she ate that food. So be able to define common terms on the back of food labels, analyze the information about what nutrition is in them, Tell me, according to Anna's food diary, how well was she following the requirements or exceeding the requirements of a diabetic? You're going to learn about what kind of foods diabetics should and shouldn't have and what the daily value or the percentage of each meal that they should have. Then in this activity, the next activity, 2.23, you're going to get to complete a series of molecular puzzles to build. You're going to draw those out, and that's called the biochemistry of food. Following that, Unit 2.24, we're going to do a colometry experiment where we're going to burn food to figure out the calories that were in the food and see how the body uses these things to harness power and energy. These are the essential questions that you will need to know by the end of Activity 2.22 in order to be able to do well in the test. What are the main nutrients found in food? How do the macromolecules um, get dissected in foods or get detected in foods? What types of foods, especially sugar, starch, and proteins, and lipids, contain them, and how can food labels be used to evaluate dietary choices? What roles do these nutrients play in your body? What are the basic recommendations for diabetics? I want you to be able to know down to the structural components, the carbohydrates, um, the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygens, the nitrogen, and the phosphorus. I want you to know what it looks like for each of the macromolecules. Two important terms you'll need to be able to define are dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis, and how they relate to your body harnessing food and how to calculate the amount of energy in food using calometry. For this activity, just to recap again, what are macromolecules? They're nutrients that we need. Where are they found? In our food. They are large organic molecules that contain carbon and they're necessary for life. Proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, each has an adequate amount in the body that you need in order to keep your body in balance. For this activity, nutritional labels, you will need to make sure that you pick out the appropriate things on the back of a food label. I'll show you a variety of ones that Anna had off of her food diary and you'll get to pick which one you would like to analyze for the activity. Here's a list of things that we tested in class or that Anna had on her food diary. And to the right I have six things um, pictured out on the back of the food label. At the top of the food label you will always see serving size. Pay attention to serving size because not all serving sizes are created equally. It might be a small can of soda, or it might be a two liter of soda. Common sense tells us there's going to be more of those things in a two liter than there is a can of soda, but when you turn it to the back, the serving size might actually be the same. Number two, this is where you find how many calories are in the food just from the fat. Number three are some nutrients that you need to limit, such as fats, cholesterol, and salt, aka sodium. On the right-hand side, number four, the percentage daily value is what percent of your diet should make up or what percent of your diet that would count as. So if you had three grams of fat, that would be 5% of what your body needs for the entire day in that one serving. Number five are things you need to get plenty of, um, for example, proteins and vitamins. And number six gives you just a basic outline of a 2,000 calorie diet, 2,500 calorie diet, and the daily values that are recommended based on those. There's a web page. Um, the Federal Department of Health and Human Services, or the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, has a website you can go on and investigate further each one of these facts when it comes to looking up and defining the terms for the assignment. So take a look at that website. It's in your activity. Okay, and then there's a little bit about each thing again that we just saw. So number one, serving size. It's the section is basis for determining the number of calories for the amount of each nutrient and percentage daily values of a food. 
You use it to compare how much you're actually eating. So if you notice here, it says uh, in the package of whatever this is a food label for, label for, one cup is a serving size, and the whole bag contains two cups. So servings per container, about two. Serving sizes are given in familiar units such as a cup or a piece, things like that. When you get down to number two, the amount of calories, whenever you're trying to maintain your weight, either lose or gain, you need to pay attention to calories. The basic diet that we go off of is a 2,000 calorie diet. The amount of calories is listed on the left-hand side, total in the product, and then it will break it down just how many of those calories are from fat. Why is it important? Well, when we get into our calorimetry lab, you'll learn about how fat is a great source for energy and the calories from fat, how those relate. The key is to balance how many calories you eat with how many calories your body uses. So if you're just going to do the basic, you know, walking around, going to school, you're not going to work out afterwards, then you're going to need to limit what you eat in order to maintain your weight. Or you need to work out if you want to lose weight. Or if you're trying to put on weight for a sport or bodybuilding, then you need to eat more calories, not necessarily calories from fat, but calories from protein. Remember that a product that has fat-free isn't actually calorie-free. So this is where you pay attention to how many calories from fat versus how many calorie in general there are in that product. The nutrients that we need to limit are things such as fat, cholesterol, and salt. Right there, number three. Eating too much of these things can actually increase your risk of diseases such as heart disease, cancer, high blood pressure. Your goal is to stay below 100% daily value for each of these nutrients. So let's say this is, um, you know, a bag of chips, and you're not just going to eat chips. You're going to probably have a sandwich with that, maybe a soda. Maybe later in the day you're going to have some dinner as well. Well, every single thing you eat, you have to add up those percentages. So if this one bag of chips has 18% of how much fat you're supposed to have for the day, then you really have to make sure the other choices you're making total up to less than 100%. The nutrients we want a lot of, or enough of, are the ones labeled here in red, fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, iron. Americans often don't get enough dietary fiber. Fiber helps move things through your system. Um, it helps you go poo, if you want to be honest. And fiber also helps diabetics with their carbohydrate levels. So for every carbohydrate that a diabetic takes in, they want fiber to balance it out because it helps move it through the system. Eating enough of these nutrients can improve your health and reduce your total risk of things such as diabetes. Percentage daily value pictured here, number five. Again, we've talked about the percentage needs to total up to under a thousand, sorry, un, totaled up to 2,000 calorie diet. So that's based on 2,000 calories. If your diet says you only need to eat 1,500, then those percentages are going to be too high because you're trying to limit your nutrients. Let's break it down. 18% for total fat. This means that one serving of this food equals 18% of what you should have for the day. 5% daily value or less is low. 20% daily value or more is high. Pay attention to this number because you're going to be asked to look at Anna's nutritional analysis. I'm going to have what she ate, according to her food diary, already plugged in for you, and it's going to tell you what percentage that made up of her diet and what her recommended was. You will need to tell me if it's high, low, or normal. So remember, 5% is too low, 20% or more is too high. So what is the daily value? It provides information in the footnote, including things about fat, sodiums, fiber, and each label could be a little different. For example, this one says based on a 2,000 calorie diet. And it suggests what you should try to stay below. If you guys look in number six, the blue, it tells you on the right hand side what you should try to stay less than. So that's your recommendations. So DVs versus dietary reference intakes. The FDA makes recommendations for daily nutritional requirements. They call these DRIs, and they meet the nutritional needs of other factors and according to your size, your weight, and your activity. So if you're someone that's overweight and you're trying to lose weight, your daily value will be different than what the label says. You'll go off of your DRI instead. You can go to this website pictured here, it's interactive, and you can actually type in your data and figure out what your percentage daily values, your DRIs would be. 
Um, this website is kind of finicky. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. And so the original activity asks you to plug in everything from Anna's food diary and her height and her weight from her autopsy. I've made it a little bit simpler and went ahead and did that for you. So you're just going to analyze it on the actual Word document in class. Here's the food tracker that I use to do that. Super tracker. I put in her information for you. This is a screenshot. Uh, with her height and her weight and whatnot. You need to make sure that you understand the main components in the foods. We did a little um, phrase, we've watched an Amoeba Sisters clip that talked about cho, cho, chon, chomp. C-H-O-N, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and a little bit of phosphorus as well. This is a table that shows the elements that are in your human body, you know, through consumption, when you eat things, drink things, breathe in things. So oxygen, carbon dioxide, things like that. Oxygen, the percentage of your body is 65%. What is water made out of? Water is H2O. Two hydrogens, one oxygen. So if you take a look up here, H, hydrogen, makes up 9.56%. O, oxygen, makes up 65%. You've got a little bit of carbon and a little bit of nitrogen. So most of your body are those main components. Why? Because those are the components found in all your food. C-H-O-N. The phosphorus comes from nucleic acids. We talked about that in the notes as well. And you can look at those uh, other trace things that we find in some of our food as well. Trace elements are elements that you only need a little bit of, essential for life, but if you don't have them, certain diseases can follow. For example, it, in our salt in America, you will look on the side of it and it says iodized salt. Iodized means they actually put iodine in our salt. Yeah, that red stuff that we use in lab, they tell you not to get on you. There are trace amounts in it in your salt that you eat when you salt your food. It's actually essential to life, and without it, without it being added to things like our salt and our food and our water, we can actually get something like pictured on the right. That's called a goiter, and that's found in certain third world countries where they don't have iodine in their diet, and your body will hold on to the water in places like your throat and create these big goiters. I know, something gross to end with, but feel free to go back through the slides and look over the daily values if you have any questions in class, and I'm going to have you guys analyze Anna.